Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about SSH dynamic port forwarding and why it's a big deal. So many enterprises use SSH accessible jump servers to access business critical systems that are behind a firewall. Administrators first connect to the jump server using SSH before connecting to the target system as we see here. They'll first go through the firewall and then connect to a hardened host and from that hardened host they'll connect to all of their critical system. So you have server one, server two, and server three. This method usually works great as long as the administrator sticks to command line administration, but it gets a bit more tricky when an administrator wants to break out of the command line realm and start using web-based interfaces instead. So let's go ahead and back up a little bit and see what our old options were, and then we can see why dynamic port forwarding is so awesome. Now, before we can get any sort of port forwarding to work, there is one setting that you need to make sure is on in your sshd config file. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at that. We're going to ssh into the jump box. And then sudo vim etsy ssh sshd. And then we need to come down here to allow TCP forwarding. You need to make sure this is set to yes. On most Ubuntu and Debian distributions, it is set to yes by default. But if it isn't, none of this is going to work. So go ahead and fix that and then restart your SSHD service and then join the video. So the very traditional way to use this would be to use the J option in SSH, the jump option, in order to jump through one server and into the next. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to SSH, and then I'm going to use the capital J option. And I'm going to jump into my jump box, which uh, has the host name JB. And then I want to jump into server 3. So we're going to do that. First, I'm going to jump into JB, which is the jump box. And then from here, I'm going to jump into server three, which you can see here. Now I'm in server three, so I can do all of my administration. Now, the previous method is fine if you want to stick to command line administration. But say there is a web server running on port 443 on server three that we need access to. The way that we would reach that using static port forwarding is we would use the SSH command capital L, we'll define the local port that we want to bind to. So we'll call it 9001. And then this next command is going to be relative to the jump box. So we're going to say server 03 on port 443. And then the box that we're going to jump into, so JB. We're going to enter our password. And now that we're jumped into it, we can access our uh, web browser and get to it. So we're going to open up Firefox. We're going to go to HTTPS colon localhost. And then on port 9001, we're going to authenticate. And here is the web GUI for the server. Now, this method of access works fine for reaching the web server on only one single server. But if you have web interfaces running on several servers, this isn't going to work so well since it's statically defined. You'd have to close your SSH connection, change it, and then reopen it for every web browser or every web interface that you wanted to get to. So that's where dynamic port forwarding comes into play. So let's see how we can set that up. To set up dynamic port forwarding, we're going to use the SSH command again. We're going to use the hyphen capital D. Then we're going to define the local port that we want to bind to. So we'll call it 9002 this time. And then the server that we're going to use is our jump box, so JB. We're going to enter our password. Once we're logged in, we're going to open up our web browser again. I'm using Foxy Proxy, so we're going to come down here to Options. We're going to add, we'll call it SSH jump box. The proxy type is going to be SOX5 because the dynamic port forwarding use, utilizes the SOX5 protocol. Um, the IP address is going to be our local host. And then the port is going to be 9002. And then we're going to save that. We're going to change this to SSH jump box. 
And then if we type in server03, actually, it'll bring us here. We'll authenticate again. And we have access to the web interface. And this is great because not only do we have access to this one server going through the proxy, but we can access anything else. Now, on this home network, I don't have any other servers that have a web interface, but I can demonstrate by going to uh, linuxmint.com, or we can go to reddit.com. Took a second for it to open reddit.com or any other server that that server has access to. Typing out those commands is kind of a pain and we always want security to be easier. So we can set this up to work automatically by editing our .ssh config file. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to vim into .ssh config and then we'll come down here. And we will type in host, we'll call it JB. Uh, host name is going to be, that's the IP address of the jump box. User is Nate. And then we're going to use, let's scroll down a little bit so you can actually see, dynamic. Board, and then the port, let's call it 1080, 1080 this time. And then we'll write it out. And now all we should have to do is SSH JB. And of course, we can set up an SSH key to make that automatic too. And now when we go back to our web browser, set up our proxy again and change the port to 1080. Save it, and then we can go and it sets up the dynamic port forwarding for us automatically. And that's how easy it is to set up dynamic port forwarding in Linux. Remember, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.